Oh. The website, it's absolutely amazing. I love oh, it. So glad. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I had a look at it. I love it. It's stunning, stunning, stunning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I mean, I've been running. Um, I've been running the site for uh, probably like eight or nine years now. Yeah. So, what inspired that though? Like, what was the thought um, process? You know, I was um, I was lecturing full time. I was lecturing face to face. Um, okay. At a, uh, I don't know if you remember or know of or whatever, uh, Forbes Lever Baker. They did um, face-to-face lectures for people sal- uh, studying through UNISA, through you know? Like, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I was lecturing there full-time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, when I left lecturing, you know, you still, you get emails from students. Can you help me? Can you mm. tell me? Blah, blah, blah. And I ended up finding that a lot of the stuff that you discuss in class is like, is non-content based, you know, like interviews. And, yeah worries and concerns and and I also realized and I knew from my own experience just how much there is that people expect you to know that no one tells you <laughs> so true. you know 100%. it's all this stuff so I sort of I started it with a byline which I think you can still kind of see somewhere it's probably on my YouTube channel um of yeah pretty much like stuff I wish someone told me you know things that I wish someone uh, told me that was mm-hmm. where that was where it came from so to start off with I just posted articles where instead of telling everybody the same thing and sending it an email, I could just go, go read this. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> just and click it, it'll work. That's it, it done. Work. I can't keep writing yeah. the same email again and again and again. And then, um, mm-hmm. yeah, so like I, I just, and then when I started working for myself, obviously it was quite, it was quite valuable to have a, ha, have a site. And, and now I focus a little more on study coaching than, than, than wow. the sort of thing itself. Sure. Um, yeah, but the site predominantly is still for, uh, you know, the blog, especially is for, for people with, you know, information and insights and help and guidance. Um, and I'm just finding it's so valuable to have other voices. So I'm spending more time doing these types of things because I think, to some extent, I'm almost sure that these students are like, if I have to hear her one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so <laughs> but you're very passionate about it, so I so I, I don't think they get that. You oh, actually no, I think love it, and you can I talk. Do. I do. No, I love yeah. it. But it's you know, by the time, I mean, you know how long it takes students to qualify, right? So there's, yeah. there's students that have been sort of interacting or watching or like, you know, for like five, six years, and by that time, sure. it has to be a little annoying. You know, if I have to tell you to do questions <laughs> one more time. <laughs> And now I've decided I'm going to get other people to tell my students stuff. <laughs> sure. Okay. That, that also works. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so this, um, because technology is so much easier now than it has been in the past and everything, it's just, it's such a benefit. And again, I wish it was something that I had have had when I was studying is True. to be able to just share and present and expose them to conversations they're not going to have, people they wouldn't mm. have connections with you know, situations and stuff that they normally, you know, are, ne- are not going to know have, you know, so, and people that they yeah. wouldn't necessarily be able to connect with themselves. Um, yeah. And, and, and so far it's going, it's going really well. And what I'm really glad, I'm so, so happy that most people that I ask, um, you know, can I, you know, will you do this with me? Most people are like, yeah, sure. I'll take the time for you, which is amazing. It's good. Yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, yeah. To be fair, yeah, men are more eager than the women. Like the women are like, oh, I've got on camera, and they're like, let me find a male colleague for you. <laughs> I'm like, no, I need women as well. Like, I need yeah, everyone. exactly. So, but yeah, I'm so it's so nice to know, you know, how many people are like, no, I'll give you time for you know for your students and whatever is beneficial for for students and stuff. So I'm very grateful mm. that there's other people out there who care about. Um, you know other people's journeys and um, I'm hoping that yeah it does definitely it creates I've got so many students just email me and, and message me and stuff and they're like oh so motivating to other people's stories sure. and that's actually good so know. yeah so and I love it I mean it's just it means I meet all sorts of people that I wouldn't normally meet anyway so it works for me <laughs> I just wish I could go back in time <laughs> and do some of this and have that experience I know it's not fair yeah <laughs> Mm. Today I am talking to to Pat and Pat's from BDO and he's going to um, apparently talk about a whole bunch of stuff that I know are really burning questions from um, 
from, from students and from uh, young professionals that I have. So Pat, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for taking the time out of your, your day and your schedule to, to chat to us. If you can give us a little bit of a background of who you are, your qualification and, and what you specialize in and what you do, um, that'll, give, that'll give our students some concept or some context into, into you and your qualification. No, thank you very much for the invite. I really appreciate it. Um, so I look after <laughs> I look after business development at BDO. I'm a business development director, and and it sounds crazy because when you speak business development, it's like, oh wait, I mean for CA, what are you doing in business development? Yeah, Surely you know yeah. you should be doing the normal. So I was actually on a hypo program, and I was going to make partner with him like five years after articles, you know. But I, I didn't love all of it. It didn't resonate with me. It was something right. that I was good at. But I didn't love it. And I, and I wanted to do something which is different, you know, which is yeah. getting work, winning the work, bringing it right. in and making sure that we've got a sustainable firm, you know, looking at firm rotation coming up. What's the strategy around that? Mm. How are we going to make sure that BDO wins work going into the future? So I'm playing in a different role. It's, it's almost a sales role. It's almost a strategic yeah, yeah. role. It's, it's a blend of marketing here and there. But it's a skill that I feel that as CAs, you know, we must get other skills. We must actually get out of this comfort zone and saying, well, you know, I'm a chartered accountant and I just want to do audit no, or I just want to become, you know, yeah. a lecturer and, and keep it there. I mean, look at what Yvonne is doing. It's absolutely different, absolutely totally. dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. They look, I'm going to use this business acumen from the CAA qualification. And actually, as they say, the world is definitely your oyster as a CA because yeah. you can plug in anywhere. Yeah. So um, I'm also a speaker. Uh, I do a lot of talks. I mean, I did a keynote last year at the finance in Daba at the accounting fair. I talked to a lot of students. We've got a lot of discussion with students. I'm a mentor to students. I mean, a lot of mentoring that we're doing, a lot of yeah. touch that we do are online. Yes. We do it on WhatsApp. Yes. Um, I've got a Facebook page where we just literally just discuss questions and we have a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. so I'm, I'm a new age CA and I'm a CA that says, look, I'm not going to be boxed. Don't box me because you don't really understand me. Yes. You know, don't give me a label. I'm literally yeah. very dynamic. And I'm here to disrupt and actually say, look, as CAs, it's time to tap into the untapped. Yeah, yeah. I, I really love that. I think you've said so many things that I, I almost wonder if um, there's a couple of people out there going, did Yvonne tell him to say that? Because <laughs> 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 every, every conversation I have, um, you know, there's a couple of questions and a couple of topics that I, I talk about because I know it's something that when you're a student and you're just studying the subject and you're just studying the work, it is a bit boxed. You know, you, you focus on the calculations and the theory and da, 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 and it's, it is easy to fall into a trap of thinking that that's what your life is going to be about. You know, I'm going to be an auditor. I'm going to be an accountant. Um, so that's one of the reasons I'm really happy to chat to you because you're saying, yeah, yeah, I've done all that. Yeah. I am a CA. Yeah. Like that's a God, you know, been there, da, da, da. good at audit. I can do it. But that's not my passion. And you're doing, you know, business development, as you say, finding clients, exploring the market, you know, all the marketing stuff, a little sales, a little bit of a high level around that. Um, and, and yeah, building a business. It's, just like, it's almost like an entrepreneurial role. You know, it's 100%, like building 100%. a business inside a brand. You know, you're it's a business. Yeah. yeah. So 100%. you're actually, and I really like that term, you know, you don't have to just be an entrepreneur when you, where you start and build your own business. You can help build True. someone else's business, you know. True. Uh, and there's no question that the skills that you learn as a CA are valuable to you, but the style of learning, the focus of learning, the discipline, and the underlying skills, network, soft skills, soft skills, yep. professional skills, um, are a really great basis to expand those skills. And in the world we're living in, innovation, adaptation is key, right? Like, so... Um, I, I think I think it's fantastic, and I, you know, I've long trying, been trying to tell my students like, don't focus on the fact that I'm going to be sitting behind a desk doing calculations because the world yep. is far more interesting than that. Like Definitely. far, far, far more interesting than that. So yeah, I think there's a couple of people that are like, hmm. <laughs> No, it's, it's definitely true. I mean, you're touching on some pertinent points to say, look, you know, let's not box ourselves. Let's actually no. realize that, you know, the world is so massive. And, and it irks me when I look at it. I mean, I looked at um, software that comes in that's on the cloud and it's not CAs running that. Yeah. It's not CAs at yeah, the yeah, forefront yeah. of it. I'm like, yeah. but wait, you know, a tech company comes into our space and dominates it. Yeah. How's I've that got a problem with that? Like, we should be doing that, man. We should be doing that. <laughs> that's my but, space. But, you know, are, yeah. we, are we SCAs thinking in the box? Yeah, is that the problem? So. Or are we, you know, are we just 
confounding ourselves to say, oh, well, you know, I've only studied this, so that's what I know. That's I mean, what I, but I think, I think you make a really good point. And I think, you know, I, I believe there's a couple of reasons for that. One, that um, students and society, students still buy into the idea that you get a classic accountant, you know, suit and tie. And I mean, you're in the luxe suit, so you look all fancy and stuff. Um, but, you know, like the, the classic suit and tie and like the boring gray accountant, you know, mm -hmm. society still sells that image to some extent. And yep. I think as a student, a lot of my students kind of believe that's who I need to be in order to qualify. Like if I'm not gray, not boring, but if I don't have like the gray person, if I'm not a perfectionist, if I'm not this, if I'm not that, then I won't be a good CA. And I think mm. that, is a, that is a stereotype that I'm so keen to get rid of because I don't know any CAs that are classic CAs. I don't actually, like I know a lot of CAs <laughs> and I can honestly say none yeah. of them, like none of them are the stereotypical gray suit, you know, like they aren't there. But I think that's mm -hmm. what a lot of students perceive. You know, that's the image they have in their head when, when they think of, oh, I'm going to be an accountant. It's like, oh, shame, you're going to be boring behind the desk. Yeah. <laughs> no people skills, no interesting life. Yeah. It's going to do the same, crunching numbers all the time. So not the truth. It's like, mm -hmm. absolutely not the truth. So I'm super glad, super glad that you touched on that. Um, you're allowed to have a personality. In fact, it's, it's advised. <laughs> it's critical. Like, it's, it's critical. You have to have personality. Yeah. Th that's, what, that's what the crux of it is. I mean, if you look at it, we're business people. Yes. And that's why you study to become a chartered accountant. You study all these different tough subjects. You're a business subjects. leader. Yeah. 100%. I've yeah. always said that as a chartered accountant, you're actually studying one of the most difficult degrees. Yeah. Most difficult qualification, I must say, after actuarial science. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. actuaries, I mean, they're on another level. Sorry. Sure. And... <laughs> <laughs> studying rocket science and, and all that stuff. So I say, look, yeah. props to you guys, you know. <laughs> it's Keep okay. doing your but, thing, yeah. But besides that, I think it's so dynamic, you know. Audit wants you to wear a different hat. Um, yeah. I always yeah. say, yeah. literally, when you're doing audit tax, um, audit tax, BANAC, FINAC, your mindset is crazy. Like you're doing four different subjects at CTA level that want you to apply yourself in four different totally ways. Right. Almost totally bipolar. Agree. Yeah, it's, I'm so, again, I'm so glad you said that because one of the things <clears throat> um, uh, I discussed with my study coaching students is that, you know, you don't think about the fact that your four subjects, and the analogy I use, like your four subjects are like four different people with four different personalities and four different, you know, ways of thinking, da, 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 and they don't get along. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So it's like being in a room with four people and you have yeah. to, you know, we generally get along with one type of person more than, you know, than, than other types of people. But as a CTA student, you have to get along with all of them, even right. though the personalities are like off the charts, completely different. Mm -hmm. The dynamic, the strengths, Pretty the skills, agreement. the underlying, you know, and students kind of go in thinking, oh, well, if I study the same way no. for each of the subjects, or if I think about, no, no, not no. You know, it's the type of thing that auditing expects of you is like off the charts different to the type of skills yeah. and the type of dynamic and the type of thought processes that, you know, that manic and finic and tax. So, yeah, I totally agree with you. Like, you, you know, where you do, you need to like get out of one box into another one, get out of one yeah. box into another one, get out of yeah. one box. Into, and you're just jumping between them all the time. Then no wonder Crazy. CTA students, like, Crazy. It, it, it felt for me, it felt like it took me five years to recover from CTA. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it literally, I mean, I don't even think I recovered from it. It literally leaves, you know, a dent. Like a bit you of a literally twitch. remember, like, yeah. oh my word, that was, you know, you don't want to go back there. It's, no, it's no, that no, tough. No, it's, 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 no. it's just insane. It's it intricate. Is. I don't I mean, think I anyone sorry. ever forgets. Like, you never forget. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for everyone, I, there was still, I remember it took me like three weeks to, to sort of settle down. Well, I still thought that Unisa was going to phone me or something and tell me that they made a mistake with sure. my results and they were like, sorry, you didn't actually pass. It's like, please don't. Like, <laughs> please don't, don't, don't return. Like, please don't, don't come return. back. Yeah. I can't do this. I can't do this. Um, and, uh, and lecturing, unfortunately, means that um, every year I'm like redoing CTA. With students, mm. you know? And it's, it's like, mm. it's quite traumatizing because I'm like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> I'm so glad. I remember that pain. <laughs> <laughs> I feel your pain. Like, I'm so glad I'm not you. I'm so glad I'm not you. So yeah, uh, I hear that. So for you, can you think of one or two things that came as a surprise to you that was like total expectation gap from when you were studying, you thought your career, your life, your professional articles was going to look like this. And when you got there, you were like, oh crap. <laughs> this is not yeah. what I expected. Like, 
either for the better or for the worse, because there's both, right? There's stuff that you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then there's stuff that you're like, oh my gosh, maybe I've made a mistake. <laughs> so, so as a student, you've never actually audited, no. you know, and, and that's so critical. You yeah. know, um, you've never actually done audit. So you're thinking to yourself, oh my word, I'm going to be brilliant at this thing. You know, I've got the skill set. I've got my toolbox. I passed CTA. And you get there and it's a shock of your life. Because yeah. you actually get there and say, listen, you actually know nothing. You know, you don't know exactly how to do banking cash. You don't know how to do overheads. And these are first year sections. Yeah, you've yeah. got statutory to do. You've got PPE sometimes. So you don't know actually how does it work. You've never actually used Excel. Because yeah. honestly, CTA, we never touch a laptop. No. All we do is literally just study, 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 have our legislation, walk around yeah, campus yeah. with our fat books and look very so you're cool. you're controlling a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you never actually you know, doing pivot tables, you know, you're not actually going into All the lookups and the concurrent lookups, you know, making sure that you, so you find this and you're like, Oh, my word, how does that work? Where do, where do I learn that? So now you have to catch on so quickly yeah. because you get there and the audit is running. You get yeah. given sections, you get allocated sections. Yeah. Yes, this training, but you're going to have to be quick on your toes. But what's also important, don't take for granted the knowledge you've got from Parsity. Yeah. Because what actually happened when I arrived, I remember construction contract was still IS-11, and I'll never forget that. <laughs> and I studied at WITS. So we had construction contracts, which actually had a lot of students fail third year um, and was okay. not part of the syllabus for, CTA, for, for board one, and people were complaining, why do we have to do this? And they said, we're actually giving you the edge. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Want to do business really, and we never got it. Yeah. So we walk into the room, and it's the first planning meeting, and I'm like, I don't know, know what's going on. I just got my on? laptop. I'm going to go to a client and, oh, this client has got construction contracts. You know, my eyes are wide open. They're like, does anyone know? And I'm like, yeah, I know exactly what that is. I know what happens there. And you find that second year, third years were not actually clued up what it is. No, and I was like, this is quite interesting. So don't take the knowledge of what you've studied. Because if you think so leave about, it at the door, yeah. You know, your IFRS 16, yeah. your IFRS 15, they're the new standards. Yeah. And you coming in fresh out of varsity, sure. knowing those standards. Yeah. So when you get to become part of a team, you bring that dynamic. Yep. You say, look, yep. I might not know how to do pivot V lookups. I'll learn that. But, but let I me tell you something that. about, yeah. 100%. And also right. another thing that's very important, you know, is to get in there with a learning mindset. Go in there with, a, I'm a sponge. I'm here to sponge and learn because a lot of the times we think when you come from varsity, we know it all. You yeah. know, I know exactly yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. I've got it. Um, I've passed all other yeah. distinctions. It's yeah. a different ball game, you know. Yeah. There's a way of actually speaking to people. There's a way of addressing your seniors in, a, in an yeah. email. There's a way of addressing yeah. a client. You know, there's a way of asking questions. Can I please have this? Can I have that? Yeah. You need to understand at the end of the day, you're always going to be walking into a client's premises yeah. And you're going to be working away from your office. So it's not yeah. actually your home ground. No. You know, no, no, there's, no. A, there's a level of etiquette that's required of you. Yeah, you're visitors. You're always a visitor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so true. And um, I have this discussion all the time where, uh, let's, let's be honest, most accounting types, or, or let's say the professional, the studying or whatever, does generally attract introverts. And that may change in a few years' time, but the reality is that we generally are introverts. But, you know, the the profession, your job requires you to interact well with people. And I think this is something we forget or we're not necessarily aware of is I don't care what business you're dealing with. I don't care if you're doing business with a bank. I don't care if you're doing business with the biggest company on earth. You're not actually doing business with the business. You're doing business with the people people in the business. So, you know, I don't care, you know, whether you're doing, you know, business with Investec or business with like, you know, mom's cafe down the road, that's still a human being. And, it's you know, he being, or she 100%. has a family and people and da, da, da. And I remember, you know, when, when I did articles, I had, um, I had like eight or nine years working experience before I went in there. So that was quite a benefit for me. Um, I'd been a bookkeeper for eight or nine years. It was a huge benefit. And I remember what it was like to have the auditors come into my office, you know, so I'd like, no, no, no. But anyway. But one of the hugely valuable things that I used to do was, you know, when you go into the client and you meet the bookkeeper and the accountant, they don't want you there. They hate yeah. you. Like, I mean, it's not personal, but they're like, you know, I have a life, I have yeah. a job, I've got enough stuff on my, and now I have to answer your stupid questions. That's so true. Uh, but I used to find it so valuable to make friends with them, not in a weird mm. sort of way, but, you know, if they've got 
photos of their family on their desk. You know, you can do nothing yeah. better mm -hmm. than comment on someone's kids if True. they've got photos on their desk. Like, they, you know, you, that's not a loose situation. Oh, is that your kid? Oh, that's so cute. I love it. Oh, <laughs> eyes light up. Because yeah. it's, it's not about like weird flattery, but it's just about I'm a human. You're a human. You're human. We're all yeah. people here. Um, let's just be people, you know. Uh, and depending, you know, if I, if I'd been there for a while or whatever, I would, you know, buy a box of biscuits or make coffee or something because you're dealing with people and you're in their office all the time and you see them for like eight hours a day. And, but just that understanding that you're a person, they're a person, they think you're there to find fraud, which you're not. That's the thing. But they're That's like, the she's yeah. just here to look for what I did wrong. For problems. Yeah. You know, she's here to look for problems and she's going to tell on me to my manager. And if I do mm. anything wrong, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I think the, the value of being a people person. And if you're not a people person, best just start reading up on some skills of how yeah. to interact with people, put them at ease because you're intimidating. You might be a first year clerk, but they don't know that. They don't. You know, when you mm -hmm. walk in and go, can I have your trial balance? They don't know that. Sure. They have no idea that you have no idea what to do with that trial balance. <laughs> <laughs> you're actually clueless. You're like, you don't even know how to tie it up. It's terrifying. You get the GL and you're like, oh my word, this thing's not even balancing. And you like, know what it is? Yeah, like trial balance will never balance in a story. It's just going to happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, sure. yeah. So, memories eh <laughs> memories yeah i was just like uh, i shudder to think some of the stuff um <clears throat> i mean it, it was it was very bad again it was very valuable for me because i spent all those years doing bank recons every month mm, mm. but if you only ever studied and you go in and then your audit manager's like oh you know you're on bank and cash you have to audit the bank recons you've never seen a bank recon you don't know yeah. how they work you don't you, like the last time you got no bank clue. recons in your studies was in first third or year. second year <laughs> oh, please man don't be ridiculous they touch bank recons in first year and that is it like you know, you do a bank recon in your first year accounting and that's the end of the story. Yeah. And you get to audit articles and they're like, hey, can you do a bank recon? Guess like, what? Somebody, anybody? No, no, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. So one of the discussions that um, we, we had a little bit before this, uh, before, before we um, formally started with this was about the money. So yeah. let's talk about the money because let's be honest, um, I call it most, especially in South Africa, most students learn to earn, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're kind of vaguely sort of perhaps maybe interested in accounting, but let's like, let's not be ridiculous. You're not actually super passionate about it. What you're passionate about is the money that you're going to be earning. 100%. And I've heard 100%. so many stories from students that go, you know, when I was at school, people came from the big firms and they came to the school and did recruitment days or at university and they were talking about all the money that you were going to make and it's going to be such a good career. Da, 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 da. So you're qualified. Where are the truckloads of money? Did you get truckloads of money when you qualified and are you now making truckloads of money? And what can you tell students about the money? So, so it's very important to be, you know, open-minded about it and, and students, this is the best form of actually doing it. So when we study, everyone comes, they give you this, oh my word, you're gonna be a superstar. This is what's gonna happen. Yeah. But in all honesty, think if we think about it, how many CAs are also qualified? So, you know, let's go back to economics 101, you know, right. the demand and supply. Yeah. You know, if there's a lot of supply, guess what happens? The price comes down. So that's exactly what happens. So yeah. we all qualify, we all get out there and say, oh, well, let's actually, you're gonna make a lot of money. You actually realize, wait, actually, you know, you're not going to make a lot of money because you actually don't have the experience. You've got audit experience, hundred yeah. percent. I yeah, agree yeah. with you. You've got yeah. audit experience, but now you need to still become a junior audit manager, a manager, a senior audit manager, yeah. you know, an associate, a junior partner, a senior partner. Or you move to another company and now you're you move to another company. financial manager. And uh, or exactly. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. You could start off as a junior account, you qualify, yep. but they say, well, you're not at group level yet. Yep. You know, you're yeah, doing yeah. accounts because it's a massive conglomerate in a global yeah. company. Yes, yeah. you you're could junior, get paid yeah. more, at, but yeah. you're still a junior. You yeah. know, there's a guy that's been there. Yvonne's been there for like 20 years yeah. and she's yeah. got CFA behind yeah. her. She's yeah. got an MBA behind her. She's also a CASA. Yeah. You know, she's worked overseas. So that's the thing. There's always other dynamics that, that actually mm. come at play. So mm. for students, what I actually recommend, which actually something I wish I knew, if you've got spare time, go and look at a set of financial statements mm. for a big listed and go to the remuneration part. You'll see exactly what the CEO earns 
what CFO earns, what the executive member, because, and also go and look at the number of years of experience development. Yeah. Then you'll start seeing that this thing actually takes a lot of time. Awesome. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't just yeah. qualify and all of a sudden you've got truckloads of money. And as Yvonne asked, I'm not actually making truckloads of money yet, being the operative word. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the, the other thing that I think is is a misnomer, and it's it's a conversation I want to have in a, in, a, in a different way. Is when you're when you're a student, you know, um, the idea of earning twenty thousand rand a month is like, what am I going to do with all that money? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then the reality hits, and um, you know, it's there's tax and there's car payments and you know you've got to pay for laptops and and mm. insurance and medical aid and blah, blah, blah. so i think there's there's also a misnomer or a misconception that somehow it's all just going to magically you're going to earn so much that all of this is not going to be a problem yeah. You know? yeah um and and one of the interesting conversations i've had with a lot of students is like don't go buy the fancy car <laughs> <laughs> don't spend you know 50 percent of your salary on the fancy car it is not a smart move buy the second hand car yeah. buy like a smaller car do not you know you do not want to go out the day you qualify and go buy yourself like a brand new out the box mm, Merc, mm. yeah and whatever and it, it's it's a it's a it's a classic thing that people are like i want to show you that i've qualified you know i want to like let the world yeah, know yeah. that i've arrived it is dangerous because there's a lot of cas that you land up in a rat race that way like you know, you, you always have to yeah. out earn your, your, your expenses. True. And if you're trying to look like someone who's got a lot of money, it's very easy to get into a lot of trouble. Like, mm, I, I fully agree. I think it's also about, listen, like as a CA is also think about it this way. You look at your life as a balance sheet. You yeah. look at your life yeah. as a, you know, you, I, I run my own yeah. life as if I'm a company. So yeah. I look yeah. at that one and say, but what am I doing? What, what yeah. else can I do? And, and that's where, you know, you start thinking out the box and you say, okay, well, you know, as a CA, doesn't necessarily mean I have to move out of home immediately. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sometimes c circumstance might force you, but I stayed at home for the longest of time. Yeah. You know, I stayed at home till I was like, yeah, for like the longest yeah. of time. Like, <laughs> where are you getting out of here? But it's important to, to make <laughs> those decisions because those, those balance out, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. it's very important to look at your balance sheet, yeah. you know, and say, where am I? What do yeah. I want to achieve? Do I, do I like actually traveling the world I actually so you need to look at it yeah. it's, it's an introspection thing you really can't apply one across the board and say this yeah. is what everyone is doing because Yvonne got a beautiful yeah. car I also want it no yeah. you can't yeah. Yeah. maybe your circumstances are not the same you know yeah it's maybe Yvonne so doesn't have to pay rent exactly exactly so you, you don't sure know that, that. or maybe Yvonne's a trust fund baby income. you don't know that like you can't and, you yeah. can't say that I, I totally agree with you I think you know I remember um you know as, as a lecturer obviously there's there's you're often the first or the only chartered accountant that people come across understandably, yeah. you know, and that yeah. happened to me as well. When I, when I started going to lectures and stuff, they were like the first CAs that I'd ever met. Mm -hmm. Like, so you kind of, who are you and what do you do? And you know, like who are these people? And I yeah. often used to get, I, I drove a, um, uh, at the time I drove like a Mazda three, you know, well, I loved yeah. it. I thought it was great, very pretty. <laughs> and most importantly, it was paid off, you know, cause for me, that was yeah. like, oh, right, yeah, fine. Um, but my students were horrified. You're a qualified CA and you're driving a Mazda. Like, what's wrong with you? Why would you do that? Because obviously they were thinking like, am I going to be poor? You know, <laughs> I was just like, I didn't qualify to be a CA, just drive a Mazda three, you know? Um, so, but one of the things, and I, and I think that the whole coronavirus thing has raised that to a little bit more of an urgency is that when, you know, when you keep your expenses so close to your income, you limit your, your options, you know, you limit your choices as well, because now you mm. can't say, I want to start my own business, or yeah. I'm going to go, you know, and move companies to a more junior role with more promise, because, but, mm. you know, they're going to pay me a little bit less, but I've got more promise. You can't do that because your expenses are here and yeah. you know, your income's here and you're like, I don't have a lot to play with. So the more you watch, even. exactly, exactly. You're barely mm. breaking even. The more mm. you watch that balance sheet, like, you know, owner's equity, like what is your, yeah. you know, yeah. what you own, but like what how much do you owe? Exactly. You know, how much like does the bank oh. own of you? Uh, you don't have mm. any choices. Like you, yeah. you want, you want to have operating capital, you know, especially, mm. and again, coronavirus has just shown us that, nobody is safe you know like nobody's safe 
So, mm. you know, if you're in a situation where you're, are you, do you have the capacity to not earn for a month? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. do, do you, you actually have operating mm -hmm. capital? Like we all are operators, the company should have operating <laughs> capital. Do you know what that means for you? <laughs> like, do you understand that? Yeah. Um, so I think um, yeah. the, the, the money discussion for young professionals is really mm. important. Guys, you are not going to make truckloads of money. No. You're going to do well, mm. but it, it is not from here to it's here. It's not crazy. Yeah, I agree. It's, and I think also, mm. you know, the, the, world, the world has changed because of technology, because of systems, because of, um, you know, because of computers, whatever. It's all one and good. People are like, oh, you know, artificial intelligence, blah, blah, blah. Um, one of the things that technology has changed is that I don't need a chartered accountant to do everything for me. That's I can problem. get a bookkeeper to do it. So, you know, mm -hmm. back in the day, I needed a chartered accountant to calculate my um, amortization table. Yeah. Because nobody else knew how to do it. Now I can plug it into a computer and it does it. And it does it itself. So why am I going to pay yeah. you? So 100%. this is, in, a, in the last couple of years, we've actually seen the salaries of CAs not necessarily drop, but they certainly aren't creating, they don't have the same slope because mm -hmm. I don't need a chartered need. accountant to yep. do that. I can get a SEMA or an ACCA or a CIPA or a cyber. I don't like, I don't actually have to have a chartered accountant to do that for me, mm. which again comes back to your discussion of what are your skills? Are you relying yep. on the fact that I, I have those four letters and that is it? And that's it. Yeah. Yep. I hate to tell you people that is, that is the beginning of your journey. I know it sounds terrible. I know how hard you get, to <laughs> get there. I'm so sorry. Spoiler alert. That is the beginning of your journey. Sure. So true. Sorry. Very, very true. I mean, that, that's the beginning actually. I mean, if, if, if you're just going to look at one source of income also, it's also a problem. It's also quite dangerous. I was having a conversation with, um, with a friend and it was actually a webinar that we're having. And I said, it's so interesting that when the world's richest was still Bill Gates, you know, everyone yes. was carrying on and then Warren Buffett, yes. everyone was carrying on about having different streams of income. We must do this, this, this. All of a sudden they've toppled those guys and it's Jeff Bezos at the top. Yeah. Everyone wants to have a tech company, Yeah. but stop and wait for a second. You know, it's your Elon Musk going into space. When Elon Musk started, you know, he did PayPal. That was back in 92. Yeah. yeah. He sold that, reinvested that money into another business. So, a lot of people look at the results and yes. not going to Syria and looking at where does this back end story come from? Yeah. How did this person get to where they, they got to? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, we, we spend too much time on the fluff and it's because people don't share the it's tough times. No one true. shares that. Look, yeah. here. actually, you know, you could become a CA and say, I want to start my own business. It's so difficult. It is very difficult. You are literally going to be using your spend, your savings, you're going to spend all of it. You're going to spend your retirement. You're going to literally feel like, oh my word, let me just settle this house. At least I've got a roof over my head. What am I going to eat? It yep. literally is difficult. But but no one easy. shares that. Exactly. Like, it's so we're okay. We're, everything's Complete. fine. Everything's good. It's easy. Yep. And I, I'm, I'm so, I, so, I so agree with that. And that's why, one of the reasons I do this with the studying is so many students are so nervous and they're like, but my journey is such a mess. Like mm. I failed mm. stuff. And honestly, because nobody has these conversations, they're all like, I'm never going to make it. You know, if I fail this mm. thing, what's this going to mean for me? And I'm like, dude, <clears throat> let me tell you, <laughs> everybody's journey is a mess yep. in some way, shape or form. Everybody mm -hmm. like, and, and that's why I've done, a, you know, why I've done a lot of these interviews. There's always a story. Everybody's got their journey. Everybody's got mm. their challenge. It's always a mess. You learn yeah. from that, you know, there's mm -hmm. a, you know, whatever you learn from that, but like, just because your stuff is a mess does not mean that it's not going to work out. It, mm -hmm. you, know, you, it does not mean that it's not going to work out. And, and it's, 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 it's absolutely crucial to not fall into that trap of if it doesn't work the first time, it's never going to work. And if mm -hmm. it's not perfect, it's not going to work. Um, because yeah. And, and, and be very careful about the people who kind of portray this image that like, it's all yeah. fine. It's all good. Like I, I doubt that when someone's like, no, 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 my journey was just perfect. Everything was out. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's like when my students say to me, no, Yvonne, my studying's fine. I'm like, you're it's lying. Not fine. <laughs> it's not fine. <laughs> you're lying. It's so difficult. It is so, so difficult yeah. that you literally don't know whether you're coming, you're going. No, it's terrifying. You're asking yourself, is this even meant for me? Am yeah, I actually going to become a CA? You know, yeah. maybe I must just quit. 
Yeah. You literally go crazy because you're missing birthday parties. You're not spending time with family. You're studying crazy amount of hours. And I always say to students, it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality, quality you're putting in. It's true. Everyone and it's, 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 it's the sacrifice, the hours. And let's be honest, especially when you get to CTA, you have never felt so stupid in your life. Like there is nothing like CTA. It's almost as though people sit and are like, how can we make these people feel like total? <laughs> like what could we do to break them? You know, that it really is. Like, yeah. That's how it feels. It's, it's, you it's, know? it's, it's a mess. It CTA is. is one of your most toughest years. Literally. Yeah. I mean, not even articles can break you like yep. CTA. No, 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 no. CTA is almost a mind game more than anything. It's not almost. It's it is a mind game. Mental strength. It is. You know, it's, yeah. and, and I always say it's like if you if you've ever watched tennis and you'll see when someone is like down two yeah. to no, um, yeah. and they have to come back and dig deep. Yeah. It's insane. You must you actually get that they are concentrating on every single shot they take. Yeah. They're making sure yeah. they don't get over the net. Let the next person make the mistake. Yeah, and you dig deep. Like yeah. and I like I like watching a lot of sports and and I see it a lot in tennis. It's not team sport. You're alone. Yeah. Yes, you've got yeah, your coach. Yes, you've got everyone. Yeah. But you alone. On that, you know, on if you miss that serve, it's on you. If you don't get that mark in the exam, it's on you. And a lot of students like the blame game. Oh, but the lecturer didn't teach me this. Oh, but the lecturer didn't tell us about this. If I told you about bananas and I ask you about oranges, they're still yeah. fruit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, I thought you didn't know that. Yeah, it's 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 very it's very true, and I think it's um, you know, and again, one of the reasons that I, I focus now more on study coaching than on lecturing subjects is because. Absolutely, by far, um, you know, after lecturing CTA for, you know, like nearly 13 years, I can tell you the reason students fail CTA is because of their mental space, you know. Yeah. And I'm not interested in like positive, motivational posters, it's all going to be okay, mm. bullshit. Like it's not. You feel like crap, mm. but how do you put Get one foot in front of the other? You know, yeah. sometimes that's all you can do. Like I need you to do that question. Mm. even if you feel stupid even if you're tired even if you feel like yeah. crap even if you're yeah. failing it even Do if it. you don't feel positive even if you're not mm. motivated even i don't care how you feel it's not about got to, young, yeah. exactly you got to do the question I, and and the yeah. one example i always use is if 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 i drag you to the gym and i make you do 100 push-ups every day mm. and you hate me and you hate it and it's traumatizing and it's but I make you do 100 push-ups every day versus you being motivated to do 100 push-ups every day and you being super enthusiastic about it. Will the results be different? And the answer is no, because what mm. counts is the 100 push-ups per day. End of story. Yeah. You know? So That's I don't it. care. Students are like, oh, but Yvonne, I can't, I'm, I'm struggling to study because I'm, I'm not motivated. <laughs> I don't give a shit how motivated you are. Like, I really don't care. I don't care how you feel. This is that <laughs> difficult. Like nobody yeah. feels like studying CTA. I feel great. Oh my word! I'm awesome today. So I'll study. And, yeah. and you know, you know what? Where yes. they get that? As students get that from doing the easy questions. Doing the questions. So I'm great at deferred tax. Let me do deferred tax question. But why aren't you doing standard costing? Because you know standard costing oh, class. No, 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 no. Especially when they give you the variance <laughs> and ask you to find the standard cost, and you're like, "How do I work backwards now?" Let's go do it deferred tax again. You know. Get out of that comfort zone. Yeah. You know, you'd rather, you always say, rather fail in your training, which is actually doing the tuts, than fail so in the true. exam. Yeah. Rather fail, you're gonna fail in that. You're you, gonna fail. You have to, you have to learn from it. Yeah. The learning process, unfortunately, goes through failure and digging out of that failure. Yeah. You, you, biggest character is built out of failure. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, it's the small little wins that'll get you across the line. Absolutely. So, in terms of, you know, in, in terms of that, one of the things that, um, that I, that I say to students when, when I talk to them is like this, this concept of failing um, and failing is not necessarily the right word, but not getting it right first time, you know, mm. sucking at it to start off with is not going to disappear when your exams are over because no. every job you take on, every promotion, every new task, every new project, every new manager, every new audit, every new, every new, everything in your life is going to start at the bottom again, which is I don't up. know what I'm doing. And I have to go from uncertainty, unsure to, okay, I kind of get it. Okay. I, mm. Oh, okay. And then you build up to competence. And the reality True. is by the time you're over here, 
you're already on the next project. So you move yes. to incompetence and something else. The only people that are super comfortable, super competent and super chuffed and are absolutely 100% happy and comfortable with exactly what they're doing are the same people that have been sitting in the same job for 10 years and they've stagnated. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, and, it's, and it's called experience. It's called experience, like whatever. But mm -hmm. if, if you're super comfortable and you 100% know exactly what you're doing all the time, every time, one, then you're stagnating. Because anyone that's growing is challenging themselves. If you want to change the yeah. world, if you want to be a financial leader, you are constantly exposed to new situations, new technology, mm. changes in the world, the economy, people, new businesses, new ideas. New, and that is going to put you exactly in the same place as you are yeah. when you touch that standard costing question. Your levels of uncertainty, your levels of, oh, shit, what am I doing now? I, I can... <laughs> I admit that still happens to me. Like I still have that. You know, yeah. if I if, if I'm if I'm looking for you know if I'm going to be taking on a new project, uh, if I'm going to be doing something I haven't done. You know, marketing is not something I studied, and now you know as, mm. as an entrepreneur I have to do. Marketing. You have to do it. I have you don't to have do a it. So like you loads and loads of research in the background. What on earth? But I'm I'm prepared to bet that you have the same thing on a daily basis. So oh, definitely. Situations that you're like what the hell is going on yeah. here? No, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those that you wake up and, and as you said, you rightly put it, I'm almost an entrepreneur in a business. Yes. And it's, it's about yeah. learning, you know, yeah. you walk into a client and all of a sudden, guess what? You've been winning work. It's nice. Sometimes you lose and you're now and on the phone what? with this yeah. financial, um, financial director from this company that's a big listed. And, and I was finding out what, what did we do wrong? What did we, where did we miss it? Uh, why didn't we get over the line? And then it's also reporting back to say, well, I thought we had a working model here. I thought that proposal yeah. was brilliant. I thought that was actually good. But, you know, yeah. you go back to the drawing board. You say, okay, yeah. well, next, next time let's refine this. Let's actually find out yeah. what we're doing here. Yeah. You know, spending time with other directors. I mean, I've got a lot of partners that I go to and they've got different skills. They've got different yeah. mindsets. And you're learning to say, okay, well, partner X is more suited for a client yeah. that is like this. So you start now learning people's characters as well. Because yeah. as I'm having a conversation, I can see, well, Yvonne would go quite nicely not, with yeah. partner X because there's, 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 there's an energy there. And if you get it wrong and Yvonne meets this partner, like, mm, you might actually lose a bit because of that. Yeah. Don't like yeah. this person. And then you're sitting with that, that sense of failure, that sense yeah. of you like... You feel that. You do. You do. I, like, like, I don't oh, care what level you're at. You feel... You know, yeah. Rejection, you know, when, when rejection yeah. happens, when failure happens, criticism, you, feel you yeah. still feel it. It doesn't matter what level you're at, whether you're a first year writing an exam or you know, a, a, a CA who's been qualified for 10 years and you tried mm. to do something that didn't work out. You'll I don't care it. what level you're at. It Definitely. sucks. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. You and, know? and when it happens, yeah. you're almost taken aback by it. You're like, what? Well, How did that happen? And it's all about the mindset. So yeah. your mental strength comes back. What do you do now? Yeah. What did I learn from that? Yeah. What are the takings from it? Yeah. What do I improve? And yeah. you move forward because yeah. you can't mope the whole day and say, and oh, you can't hide away it. from it. It's on to the next yeah. one. It's you on can't. to the next yeah. one. It's, and, and it's the same with study. You are in the same situation. Yes, you didn't get that touch correctly, but go in, spend time in the touch, understanding the why. Yeah. Not the when and the how. When do you debit? When do you credit? No, no, why? No. Why are you debiting? Why are you crediting? Yeah. Why yeah. is it there? If yeah. you don't understand the why, I can guarantee you, then you're wasting time. Yeah. Why am I on this conversation right now? Because it's something that means a lot to me. You know? yeah. Why are you running the business you're running? Because you've seen, you've spent time in it and you're passionate about yeah. it. There's a why to it. Yeah. And, and I feel that as we grow up, we, we let go of our why. You know, when yeah. we were small little kids, we used to have a vision board. You know, you'd put up David Beckham and you say, oh, I want to play soccer like David Beckham. Yeah. I want to bend it like Beckham. You need to do those little things. And, <laughs> and, and, and I always say, when we become adults, we lose that vision board. Because what a vision board did, it, it actually said, that's where I want to go. That's, where, that's my aspiration. That's where, so when the marks aren't coming as a CA, what's your why? When you're not passing, what, what are you looking and saying, yeah. hmm, that's what I want to do. You know, yeah. it, it might Step sound Oh, I want to have money. Then fine, let it be that. Yeah. Then when you're failing or when you're feeling unmotivated, yeah. ask yourself, oh, how am I going to get that money now that I'm not studying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's true. I like, and I know we, we talk about, you know, the money thing and, and, and in a way, you know, it's a little bit tongue in cheek. There's nothing wrong with, with 
wanting this qualification in part because it's it's a, it's a good yeah you know, there's there's way too many people in the country who don't have financial stability mm-hmm. you know, financial stability is incredibly important I, I i had that um you know it was a very important part of of of, of my journey and my qualification was the ability to look after my family because mm-hmm. that was something that we hadn't had growing up you know financial stability was a very very big thing for us um so that was like it wasn't about the bling money. It was just about kn- knowing that I would be able to look after my mom. I would be able yeah. to pay my own yeah. bills um, was very, you know, very important. So there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Absolutely nothing, nothing wrong with that. But, yeah. but you're right. It's like when things are going wrong, take, don't, don't lose yourself in, well, this is crap and it's always going to be this way. And it's such, it's, you're going to feel that way and that's fine. But the strength is in stepping back and go is, why do I want this? Yes, I know. When I signed up, I knew it was going to be hard, and this is the hard. You know, this, this is, is the this hard. is that bridge. This is that it. bridge this that, that I'm going to cross. This yeah, is it. This is it. Yeah. So, what do I want this for? Is the is is that goal still valid? You know, do mm. do I still want the same thing? Am I still okay? Great. Am I prepared to take that step? You know, am I yeah. prepared to make the jump? Am I prepared to wade through this rubbish? Am I prepared to do this? And again, you know, for me, very very importantly is are you prepared to reach out and ask for help? Because most of my students, when they struggle. Yeah. Now, because Because it's it's a very interesting dynamic because usually the people study this, call it um, CASA row degree, they get a high, you know, score coming into varsity in terms of it's a 42 or 49 or whatever it yeah. is, APS that you must get just to make it in. So they've got this mindset that, oh, I'm the smartest person in the world. Now, guess what? You've taken all the smart people and you've put them <laughs> in one place and say, okay, here you go, smart people. You all got degrees. You're now all you're very smart. you're one of the smart people. I'll never forget this. When I first got to VITS, they said to us, actually, you know, we don't actually rank your schooling system. We, we don't think you guys are smart at all. That time, we were like, what? We got 90s. We got... It means, Come on, nothing. Man. It means absolutely nothing. And as soon as we started doing computational math, statistics, economics, we we're like, wait, what? We thought we were smart. And, and then it starts kicking in. Yeah. Yeah. It, it starts kicking in. And, and you look at it from the class we started about yeah. 1,500. When we ended, literally, the guys that did it in record time, as it's called, yeah. it was about 150. Yeah. So you, you, you see there that shucks, if that was the cream of the crop from, yeah. from high school yeah. all over the country and you were all in one place, what separates the best from the rest? Yeah. And yeah. that's what will happen. Yeah. And it is, uh, you know, again, um, a huge, a huge part of, of my study coaching. In fact, it's, it's pretty much based on that is exactly what you say. And it's, um, I don't, I don't know if you've read the book Mindset by, by Carol Dweck, or you know of, of her work on mindset, the fixed versus growth mindset. It's a very big thing at the moment in primary schools and private schools, like in, okay. in the States and in South Africa, starting to adopt it or whatever. But anyway, it's a, it's a book I read quite a few years back. And when I read it, I was like, yep, that's me. Um, and so many of my students. And the, the fascinating thing about it, like you said, the, the, the underlying issue with those high marks is that the way that the schooling system works is that you're smart and you get there quickly and easily. And if, if mm. you're able to get the answer and you're able to memorize stuff quickly and easily yes. at school, you get good marks. Yes. Now, the problem with that is that um, your values, your understanding of who you are and your understanding of how the world works is based on the feedback that you get. So at school, you yeah. get the high marks, right? But what is, it, what is it that you're hearing from people? You're hearing, you mm. are smart, you're fast. Wow, you must be so smart to get such good marks. You're so quick, da 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 da, da. Yeah. You're so used to that, that your belief is that I am smart and therefore I get things right first time, every time. I don't have to struggle. It's mm. not an issue for me. Um, and the people in your class who had to struggle to learn, like they had to, were like, well, you're stupid, honestly, yeah. because that's what the schooling system says. True. If you take, if you, if you take your time to learn something, you must be stupid, right? Cause that's yeah. how school works. Then you get into university and by third year, what do you find? The strugglers are the one who are doing well. And the ones Why? Because, got because the- they are used to the determination. They are used to plugging through stuff. They're used to going, I don't understand. Whereas mm. you know, as, as with a fixed mindset, we're so used to doing well at school. We're like, first time, get it, not a yeah. problem. First time, every- yeah. when something happens that we don't get the first time, sure. we don't sure. get it right. We're like, everything's changed. My definition of myself 
Does that mean I'm not smart now? Yeah. Does it mean that I'm not intelligent? Everything I knew about myself is now a mess. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I'm not going to ask for help because the people who need help are the stupid ones. That's what yeah. I learned from school. So for, it's, a, it's such a fascinating dynamic. 90% of students who come into the CA route are fixed mindsets. They did well at school. Mm. Or not even to say they got high marks at school, but it was a smooth process. Yeah, it, it wasn't was difficult. Smooth. There was no... Yeah. yeah. When I heard it from the teacher, when I read through it, it was like, oh, okay, it. fine. It clicked. That's cool. Yeah. You know, it clicked. Um, now all of a sudden things don't click no more because mm. learning is a journey and the stuff is not True. just memorized. It's you've got to think, you've got to problem solve mm. and your process is totally different. And now, in all honesty, the students who had learning disabilities or what we thought of as learning disabilities at school are the guys who all do well. Yeah. Whereas my fixed mindset is like, if I don't What's get it right the first time, I'm ignoring it. Why yeah. do you avoid the yeah. standard costing question? Because you mm. didn't get it right the first time. It makes you feel like shit. And so you don't want to touch it. Because you feel uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable and I don't know what to do about it. And so I'm going to go back to something that makes me feel That makes me feel hard. good and feel great. 100%. But then guess what? In the exam, standard, standard costing, costing comes back. <laughs> yeah. about you. So honestly, this is... That if I had to boil down the reason that only 150 of those one and a half thousand people got to the end of that journey, it is because we as accounting students have a fixed mindset. That is for me, like after you know, many years, I mean, I've lectured thousands of students from first sure. year to CTA, like thousands. And I, I can tell you, like, hands down, 90, 95% of my students, once I unpack a few things, you're a perfectionist. You've got a fixed mindset, and so therefore you don't like to struggle. Simple as yeah. it is. You feel smart, uh, yeah. you're unhappy when you don't feel smart, you feel threatened, yeah. you're uncomfortable, and you leave. And you're like, disengage. I don't know what to do. I can't struggle because struggle is for stupid people. I love, I love how you said perfectionist, because yeah. if you look at any accounting student, oh, but I can't finish the question. It's not about finishing. Exactly. It's about scoring marks. <laughs> Everyone wants to finish the paper. I want to finish this paper. Oh, I didn't get to the end. And, and, and once you start learning, it's not about that. It's not about a method to say, oh, this is A, B, C, D, E, F. Then I must start from A. You can start answering from G. Yeah, yeah. Knock yeah. out those marks. Get those marks. What do we do? Oh, no, I saw that question was hard. I'm going to start with it. If yeah. you don't get it right, it knocks you. You yeah. make stupid yeah. mistakes on stuff that you could do in your sleep. Yeah, so yeah. Students need to realize that it's actually, you know, it's a, it's a mark scoring game here. It is. You need 50, you've passed. It is. You must yeah. actually realize that not everyone yeah. will clock at 80. Yes, yeah. you might have been an 80 student in um, high school, but varsity, maybe it's you're not an 80 student in when it's okay. It's your journey. It's a game. Yeah, this is, this is, you're so right. It's, uh, this is, the, the, the challenge I feel is that the game changed and nobody told the students. Yeah. You know, it's like, we kind yeah. of think, you know, you go from school and then you go to university and you kind of yeah. just think that it's just going to be a little harder each time. Mm. That's, the game has changed. If you, you know, if, if you were playing yeah. cricket, you're now playing rugby. It's a contact sport. <laughs> it's going to The ball is, is, a, is a different shape. Well, nothing is the same. And nobody yeah. tells you. So you go in there with your cricket bat <laughs> and you're like, I don't understand why I didn't get picked up. Why are they not bowling? What's going on? <laughs> Where's the ball? Like, I don't understand, you know. Um, and it's, it, it is as simple and as complicated as that. And yeah. one of the things, you know, I, I, I say, like, to, it's not like you're studying. It's not about the knowledge. Mm. Because I don't care how much you know, if you can't use that knowledge in the exam to do what they want you to do, which is get more than 50% of the marks. That's it. Your knowledge is written. I, you can't, I always say to students, you're not going to write a sentence at the end of your question and go, I don't know how to do this. Deferred tax layout set up journals yeah. whatever but trust me like i can tell you a lot of stuff about different tax you know i can i can yeah. tell you theory about the stuff like i don't give a shit <laughs> i can regurgitate yeah I is I know, like, paragraph 15 yeah. i know it off by heart yeah that's fantastic <laughs> can you just do the journal for me no no, no i don't know how to do that because i don't learn the journal i learn you know um and, yeah. uh, you know we, we're kind of making a little bit of a joke of it and it, and it is quite but serious so but it's, yeah. the the reality is like you know i want students to understand that learning is not what you think it is learning is Process. not a switch it's not a i hear no. something now i know it i remember it and i'm able to do it and it's all fine um learning it, it's like driving a car you know, i don't care how many instructions you could list to me off by heart the steps that you have to follow to drive a car you know you can get in the car. do this the, the, the day you 
start learning to drive is the yeah. day that you get behind the wheel of a car and switch the engine on. Then yeah. everything goes out the window. Then it's a different ball game. Different All ball. Of a sudden, and you have, not, exactly, you have not started learning how to drive a car until you get behind the wheel of that thing mm -hmm. and you switch it on for yourself and you go, oh crap. <laughs> I agree. Exactly. No, it's 100%. All of that but it, it's, of it's speaking to the journey and yeah. you must be willing to take that first step. You must be and willing to jump that when the it's cliff. hard, it doesn't it mean hard. that it's over. Yes. It's that's just because it's hard doesn't mean that yeah. you're not made to do this mm. because that's, that's, that's what I find my students are so terrified is, but Yvonne, if I admit that it's hard, it means, it means that I'm not going to make it. It means that I'm not designed mm. for this. It means that I'm not smart enough. It means I'm a like, guys, it doesn't mean anything. It means what you make it. Yeah. And 100%. what this means is that you need to take another step. Yeah. And another Definitely. Even take if you don't step, see the yes. hope. Even if you don't see it coming you right, you have, just to, you have to jump. Going. You have to. It's literally every entrepreneur that will tell you this story, yeah. and the true story will tell you. Look, the yeah, true one. I didn't even know what I was going to eat tomorrow. Yeah. They will tell you straight up. I had no clue. That's the people who will tell you the actual. You know, yeah. listen here. It's yeah. it's, it's not it's actually hard. what you see. It's not the Instagram life. No, nope. and, and that's what nope. students nope. need to understand. That there's Instagram, and then there's the work behind it. You know, so much. what are you showing the world? Yeah, you know, as so students, much. we've got our fancy trolleys, we're walking around, everyone thinks, oh my word, I want to also study that. But that's the price you're paying for having that trolley. Yeah, it is. It is. Difficult. It is so difficult it is that difficult. sometimes you're sitting there and you're like, what is going on? Absolutely. And in but those you cases, have... you don't have to necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you just have to keep going. You have to have, have faith to in the journey. And I think... When, when I say to students, you need to have faith, they misinterpret what I'm saying. And they think, um, you know, that I'm saying to them that you need to be, you need to have faith that you, that you're going to pass now, you know, like, mm. it, you know, you need to have confidence that it's going to go right now. And I'm like, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. When I'm saying you need to have faith and you need to have confidence, you need to have faith enough to take that step, even though yeah. it still feels hopeless. Faith is about what you do when it feels hopeless. Yeah. You know, faith is not what you do when you can clearly see the past see and it's all yeah. obvious and designed and guaranteed mm -hmm. and ticked off. That's not faith. Faith is what you do in the dark. You yeah. know, when it's hard, ugly, cold, miserable, you're on your own and it feels useless and it feels pathetic. Faith is about still walking forward. That's mm -hmm. what faith is. You know, until slowly, you know, you keep walking and there's like a little glimmer of light. You know, and it's always and a time and yeah. you're like, okay, so there's a little glimmer of light yeah. and that, you know, and sometimes it's just, I've got to get through today. I don't know how I'm going to get through tomorrow, but today, step by step, just step have to by get step, take it as a journey. Literally every step counts. And, and you know, as students also, the small victories, you know, if, if you, man. for example, couldn't do standard costing and now today you figure it out, you reward yourself. It can you're be a party, chocolate. Man. It can be something yeah. so silly. But make sure that there's a reward mechanism. Yeah. Make sure so, that there's actually something that says, well, you know what, I've done well, pat on the back, well done, you know, so that you actually start seeing that, you know what, there is some, there is some strides that you're actually taking the right, there's progress. There progress. So yeah. what tends to happen is a student don't even realize when they're even making progress because they're thinking, oh, I'm still in this hole. But Absolutely. you've actually gone Absolutely. four steps. That's progress. Acknowledge your pro progress and keep on moving. Yeah. I, I, to, I told you, and again, it's, a, it's an interesting, um, it's a very specific symptom of a fixed mindset is the fact that you don't see progress because you're a binary thinker. A fixed mindset mm -hmm. is a binary thinker. I can either do it or I can't. Well, and I can't. That's it. That's it. You know? yeah. So if I can't do it now, I'll never be able to do it. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, the growth mindset is like, I can't do it. Okay, I've kind of learned a little bit. Like I'm a little something. Yeah. So when my students say to me, oh, Yvonne, I did a question and I got 30%, then they say, the words coming out of their mouth is, oh, I know nothing. You know, I'm used mm. to, I know nothing. I'm like, last I checked, 30% does not equal zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> 30 equals 30, which means that yeah. you know something. And then they do another question and they get 35. And I'm like, oh, sweet, you're progressing. And they're like, I'm not, I'm not getting anywhere because I'm still mm. failing because they can only yeah. see fail pass. I'm like, no, 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 no. Mm. You're able to do a little bit more. And with another 10 questions, one out of five questions, yeah. by increasing just 10%, just 5%, you, you slowly build. And that yeah. is how you learn. And again, it's, it's, it's very much a, it's a textbook symptom of a fixed mindset that mm -hmm. you're unable, you, you do not comprehend 
progress and improvement because yeah. for you, it only counts that you can do it now. Mm. That's it. That's all that matters. Like getting there doesn't exist. Like yeah, that, and, that doesn't exist. And that's, that's insane because they're just skipping the biggest part of it. Yeah. That the yeah. whole journey is, yeah. is literally gone immediately by you thinking, oh, well, you know, can't do it I'm now, there so now. Will... And, yeah. and that's so dangerous. And, and, and that fixed mindset is also one that if things are going well, everything becomes a tick box. Yes. So tick box yeah. is, so, oh yeah, I've, I've done that. You know? yeah. And then all of a sudden you come to the end of your articles and people ask you, what's the plan? And you're like, but what do you mean? Yeah. Because it was structured. You're going to go to school <gasps> for 12 years. You do four years. Um, varsity, you do three years articles, and Out. all of a sudden, what do I do? Did you have Did I you have do. that experience? Did you have that experience where you qualified and you were like, "Oh crap! Now I have to start again, and there's no textbook and there's no structure, and I don't know. Nobody's telling me what I have to do next. Does that happen <laughs> I, to you?" I knew for a fact that I didn't like auditing, okay. but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Okay, so it was very tricky. By so means like, of elimination, oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I know I'm not doing that, but, but then what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? There was no structure anymore because yeah. I was so used to it. You go to varsity yes. and you do your CTA and then you do board one, board two. Someone's Finish always your making your decisions for you. 100%. Now yep. you have to make a decision for yourself. Yeah. And you're like, what must I do? Where do I go? Do I go left? Do I go right? What if I'm making the wrong decision? Because now you're so used to structure. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. you could actually go out to market and what if I don't like it in market? What yeah. if I actually supposed to be an auditor? What if I'm taking yeah. a big jump? Yeah. The thing is, you're always back to square one, as you said. You know, when you were in primary school, grade seven, you yeah. were a head boy, head girl. You were the, you know, you owned the school. And then guess what? You had to high go school. to high school in grade eight again. Grade eight, you they picking on you. You have to hide now because the prefects are around the corner. Then all of a sudden, you the matric again, and you the boss. Big then you get to varsity, yeah. and varsity, and you correct. Varsity, no one cares. Okay. Actually, absolutely no one cares. There's no prefix. There's no, yep. it's literally the, the, the yeah. miniature of what the world is. Yep. No one cares. No, no one cares. You no. attend your lecture, you don't attend it. It's up yeah. to you. No one's Do you touch your yeah. No one cares. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, but what happened to the structure? Yeah. You get to work and all of a sudden the caring is back because the manager on your case about yeah. work that needs to be done. Mm. This. So all of a sudden you're like, but I'm so used to being you know self-sufficient no one tells me what to do all of a sudden i've had that for four years now you're back to a structure and mm. guess what the structure's got hierarchy and if you're not yeah. used to hierarchy a lot of people also struggle okay. yeah oh my word i don't like especially with with the whole millennials versus the older generation it's it's the most fun thing to actually watch in the <laughs> because you know I, I, I'm a millennial. I'm in the middle there, and then this generation Z after that. But it's yeah. Well, we're, we're, I think we kind of—I'm not entirely sure how old you are, but I think we kind of fall in that. What do they call them? Exennials, kind of like between yeah. the 70, 78, 82, like so born. I'm a millennial. I'm actually this way. Are you I'm a millennial. like okay? I'm on okay. the other side of it. So what 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 happens now in the office is that you'll see the generations that are that are coming. They they question everything. Yeah. No, but why must we do this? I don't feel like doing it. And, and now the generation before that is like, but what is wrong with these kids? And I said, this is quite interesting. And it's, it's actually it's very interesting, quite interesting dynamic. to watch. It's a, it's a great dynamic to watch because the older people are like, but we didn't grow up like this. But yeah, just do what I tell you to do, man. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I always say, you know, when, we, when they grew up, their parents used to say the same thing about them. Mm. And the, so the cycle continues. Yeah. So yeah. it's all about embracing and actually understanding that look, we're all different. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. gonna, I mean, this generation literally, they were born and they had iPads. Everything was working. Yep. We did journals by hand. You know, so it's, it's all of that. So you always, you don't want to change that as well. You get yeah. so comfortable. Is you comfortable? Yeah. Months. You don't yeah. want to change that. And no. as soon as someone comes in, rocks your boat, you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you yeah. doing that? Yeah. So, so it's also finding that balance. So for young people, when you come into the environment as well, understand that literally no one owes you a favor there. You're up against yes. yeah. a thousand other people yeah. who actually want to become chartered accountants and yeah. the company doesn't owe it to you to keep no. you. No. After three years, you could be gone. Yeah. You have to fight even for less. Support. Quite even frankly, less. even less. Yeah. yeah. It's, it is. It's, it's, it's very much about um, uh, when, when you work for a company, whether it's articles or you know, any other job, the, you need to add value to every situation that you're in. And when you start that job, 
Um, I don't care that you've come in with a qualification or a CTA or a nothing, whatever the case is, they're paying you a salary to add some kind of value mm. you know, to, to them. And whether you've got a piece of paper behind you or not doesn't indicate your value until you 100%. bring that to the party and you do it. You know, I don't care what 100%. you say you can do, do it. Shut up and do your job. Like, let me see the value. Don't tell me how smart you are. Um, don't tell me how passionate you are. I want to see it. You want to because see if it? you're really passionate, I don't need It'll come through. You know, so It'll come through. when I talk to, to students, I don't have to tell them I'm passionate about teaching. It's just, it's mm-hmm. the most obvious thing. When I open my mouth, they're like, oh, okay, she's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so but, but like, I'm I love the fact that you, you're, not, you're not the traditional CA. Yeah. You don't have that mindset that says, this is who I am. And, and you touch on a brilliant, brilliant point. You see, it's not about the piece of paper. It's not no. the, the four letters. It's, you. it's about the value. You can add some mindset. Yeah. You know, you can find a person who's got no qualifications. And, and by having this non-traditional CA mindset, it means you could work with anyone. You could yeah. work with a creative. You yeah. could work with absolutely. absolutely because you actually value what they bring to the table 100%. and not what the paper says. 100%. And I think so one of the things, and I think you, you would probably agree, um, and potentially have even more of a perspective on this in, in, in your role as you know, business development, you're interacting with different corporations, companies, et cetera, et cetera, fine, on a different level. There is a tendency for people on the CA route or for CAs that are kind of in that space to be quite arrogant about what they know. You know, I'm a CA, it's the mm. hardest qualification to get, mm. Um, mm. You know, and therefore I'm very impressive. And, that I, and I'm not taking anything away from your journey and I'm not taking anything away from the value of the stuff. But one of the traps that a lot of people fall into is that accounting is more important or mm. more special or that it affords you a, a status that you know Agreed. other you know other departments or other types are, of not, worth. are not as yeah. important so you know i generally find like people go in i'm like be very careful when you go into an yeah. organization hr has a lot of value don't be looking Agreed. down at hr don't be looking down at the receptionist don't be looking down at mm. marketing department don't be looking down at it yeah. don't be looking down at the people who clean the office because mm-hmm. you know everybody has their value has a role and has everybody role. has their role yeah. and Let's be honest, most people don't understand what the hell you're doing. <laughs> so mm. as far as they're yeah. concerned, you're just crunching numbers and you have no value as far as they uh, <laughs> but the more the more that you interact with the world and, and potentially the more that you're required to work outside your comfort zone, you start realizing actually like marketing is hard. You know, like accounting is one thing. I can, like there's textbooks for that. Marketing is like magic, man. Yeah. Selling, you know, when you have to go in and sell sell Mm -hmm. something and sell a brand and sell something to somebody who's kind of like, what you're doing is really hard. Going into a company and saying, um, we would like you to pay us a lot of money to do an audit (laughs) that you don't really want in the first place. That you don't want. (laughs) The only reason that you have to pay for an audit is because the law says it's a grudge purchase, right? So it's like selling selling insurance. Nobody wants it. No one wants it. positive. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, cool. That's great. So we'll pay you for the audit. And then, you know, what would be really great is if you can like do our tax calculations for us. Mm, no, sorry. Yeah. Can't actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah because so, section 90 of the company's act. Are you allowed like- to do it? So like, what are you, what actual <laughs> value? Like, you mean I'm just going to pay you to do the damn audit? Like, that's zero value. Like, I love that. I love that. You, you know, you're required to go in and convince yeah. people to pay you money or change from their existing auditors or whatever and pay your organization money to do something that they don't actually want to do in the first place. Mm. <laughs> That's so true. No, it's hundred yeah, percent true. You know, you're, you're saying you taught you that. Yeah. You're, no, you'll never learn it. There's no textbook that teaches you that. No. But you, it's it's literally you go in it, and some people say no. You learn as you go along. Yeah. You learn different techniques. You, have you to learn, learn. You yeah. have to. You can't stop learning. And what's interesting is that you actually enjoy it. After some time, yeah. you actually start having so much. You can already start learning people's body language. Now, what's yeah. difficult with COVID? We're trying to sell over the laptop. Yes, so you've got a true. pitch and you're sitting in a pitch and you're like, I can't read the full on body language because someone switches off their camera. You can't actually get that engaged because it actually gets to that point where you can go to a pitch, do the full on pitch and you can already start saying, that person is a decision maker. Yeah. And this person here is the influencer. They yeah. influence the decision maker. Right. But you have to do it. Before you do it, you'll never know. No. You'll never ever. Yeah. And you're not in a, the very first time that you do that, you're not prepared for it. No, you're not. You're you, definitely it's not. not it's you, not as though you go in with the competence. No. You know, you, you, you have to zero. You have to 
start learning yeah. how to do it and you make mistakes yeah. along the way and you have stuff that goes right and wrong and da, 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 da. but we kind of think again as perfectionists we kind of think that you only take on jobs that you are fully qualified and competent mm. to do. you know like mm. once i can only do a deferred tax question or i can only do deferred tax if i've done it before yeah you know 100%. And, and in the real world it don't work like that doesn't work like that yeah. because you know what I, and that's the problem with 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 the way students study yeah. they'll go to lectures and I'll, i've watched this it's an interesting observation they'll make notes on the slides i'm like okay you're making notes but what notes are you making they're yeah. just taking whatever the lecturer says and rewriting it then they get home open the textbook or ifris yeah. and rewrite the notes from ifris I'm like okay and then and then they say to themselves okay let me look at my notes let me look at ifris notes that i've made oh hmm, sounds good what have you done I know. They go to the tat. Yeah. The tat is something else. And what they do, they take three hours to do one tat that's actually for 45 minutes. Yep. You're actually doing yourself an injustice. Yep. Because yeah. that is a 45 minute question, not yep. a three hour question with your notes there. So you're learning that. And then they open the solution. Like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I'll I mean. I'll do that next yourself. time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and listen to that process. You actually, Waste not once. Yeah. Yep, waste time. I would just like to clarify for everyone watching. One, I did not tell Pat to say any of this stuff. <laughs> Two, I am not paying Pat to say any of this. Three, Pat and I have never actually had a discussion before. This is the first time that we That's are meeting crazy. each other. Uh, what else? Like, I, I'm trying to not make sure people are not under the impression that I'm telling you what to say here because this is exactly what I tell students. It's like, you know, it. I do not care what you know. You know, all your stupid summaries, all that, I don't, I'm, can you use the information? Do you yeah. understand why you, when you went into class and you go, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to talk about deferred tax today. Great. Like, what am I going to have to do with this information? You know, this is, this is the why beginning. Is why why do, do you have want me to tax? do with this? Because yeah. when I ask yeah. my students, how much time do you take to understand, you know, that, that's a little section at the beginning of your, of your textbook called learning outcomes. Nobody reads mm. that crap, but if I yeah. said to you, you and I are going to have a discussion and after this discussion, you're going to have to do a calculation. You're mm -hmm. going to pay attention to anything I say based on numbers, formulae, format. True. If True. I said to you, after this discussion, you're going to have to uh, criticize something. You're going to pay attention to what you don't agree with versus discuss mm -hmm. versus create a format versus mm, argue true. versus debate versus recommend. So if, if I, if I just give you information without any indication of what's going to have to come out, what am I going to have to be able to do with this information? Yeah. It totally changes the way you absorb it. You know, like it, and, and this for me, students go in blind, like, okay, today I'm going to be learning about deeper text. What, <laughs> what are you going to have to be able to do with it once you're done? Are you yeah. learning it for calculation purposes, formats, communication, discussions, recommendations, advice? Mm. Because all of that changes or should change how you absorb it. And then True. by the time you get to the touch, you're like, oh, okay, yes. I, you know, I've learned it. this. Yeah. Like I knew what to expect. I always say to students, I want them, and this is like horrifying for them. They just can't cope. Like I want you to do a question before you go to class. I'm not interested yeah. in your damn pre-reading crap. I'm sorry. Like it lecturers and teachers are still like, I don't know, pre-reading shit. I'm not interested. Okay. I want you to do a question first. Why? Because I want you to have firsthand experience of mm. what you're going to have to be able to do with whatever you're getting in that lecture. I don't mm. give a shit that you fail the thing. I expect you to fail. You have to it's fail. It's not the yeah. reason that I want you to yeah. do it. I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in... I want you to move around in that space and look at it and go, Oh, okay. So I'm mm. going to have to build me one of these. Like this is, so when, you know, when she starts talking yeah. about deferred tax tomorrow, I, I need to be aware that like there's journals yeah. and debits and credits and like yep. this funny tax table. Deferred tax you've got a mindset of it now. Mind, you've got a you mindset have a, of it. a really good image. You don't know what's going on, but you've got a mindset. Yeah. So you yeah. kind of have like a little picture and when you get into lectures, you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Versus just now, now you now you're filling that box. You literally yeah. had this box. It was empty. Yeah. You're like, but I know what the shape and of the now, box is. That's now like, you I start the shape seeing of the box. it. Yeah. Exactly. You've got the shape, and it's so difficult. But that's the thing. You have to jump. That's yeah. actually jumping off the cliff yeah. and saying, 
Am I flying? What's happening? Am I I'm not flying? <laughs> Am I falling? You are going to fall. That's it. You, you are going to fall. You have to take the plunge because as soon as you take that plunge, what happens is that your mind starts opening up. Yeah. In class, you start picking out those specific things that, oh, I didn't know when there's a rate change, yeah. it can affect investment yeah. property and can also affect I-60. It's actually not done the same way. Yeah. Why? Oh, because one is sitting below the line in OCR. You start connecting the dots yeah. and you start bringing it together yeah. all of a sudden. And that's what happened to me. So I'm sorry if the students, I didn't actually tell you the backstory. So I actually didn't pass everything first time. I okay. actually didn't get through the whole thing first time. What happened was, oh, shucks, my mic just went. What happened was actually that um, I passed everything first year, second year, third year. Oh, actually not third year. Third year, I got 49% for FNAC. Um, mm. And I was like, just give me 1%. Oh, like, come oh, on. Like, <laughs> You know, I've never failed anything in my life. Mm. And that was the first time in my entire life I'd failed. I mean, yeah. honors, that must have been blazers, all this fancy stuff in high school that gets you excited, thinking that you've got everything on lock. And it was the first time academically that I'd failed. Um, yeah. I got to the sub, uh, I still remember the question. It was called, well, the company in the question was called yeah. your doomed CC. That was okay. the name of the company. And in brackets, it had doomed. So every time you read a sentence, the acquisition made by doomed. Oh my <laughs> and this was the SUP exam. And, and I remember they gave us the analysis of equity. I mean, I remember this thing as if it was yesterday, it's yeah. over 10 years ago. And the analysis of equity was there. And I'm like, you've given me this thing. What do you want from me? Yeah. And it had a few amounts from finance. And I was like, oh my word. It had options valued. I was like, oh. That's good. And I failed. I failed this up. Oh. And that meant that I had to, so Vitz introduced this new system saying, look, if you fail one subject, you have to redo all four subjects. <gasps> oh. So I was in a crossroads. Do I go in and pay the full 40,000 Rand and repeat what I've actually passed? <sighs> or do I focus on where I've made mistakes and actually attend a few tuts here and there and write the final year end exam? So I decided, okay, no problem. If I've passed this thing and I'm sure about it, what I started doing was I changed my approach. Okay. I started actually realizing, oh, you're not that smart. Calm down. Relax yourself. <laughs> I actually, That's so funny. I actually started doing work, call it three months in advance. So when okay. the year started and they were doing deferred tax, I'd already moved on. So I'd attend the lecture. And in the lecture, I had my quick, well, my tax that I've already done for deferred tax yeah. open. Yeah. And I just look and understand what have I missed out? What don't I know? So I go to the tax finding out what don't I know? Yeah. What don't I actually understand? And make notes of it. You need to fix this. You need to fix mm. that. So I was always ahead. I was like probably two, three months ahead of the pack. Because we've done really. I know exactly where my yeah. details are. Yeah. And then what I did is that when they wrote tests for the other three subjects which I already passed, I got those tests. Okay. And I and did, did those tests well. at home. Yeah. I did them at home, marked and said, okay, I'm still fine here. What has changed? Keep it current. Yeah. What is the new changes, especially in tax? What's changed? What's this? What's because I was like, I'm not gonna buy new textbooks on top of it. So just just keep that. Yeah. And and I passed. I actually landed up with like a 74% for FINAC and I passed the rest of the three. But what I had done is that I had applied to UJ. So oh. I had this mindset to say, well, look, um, this place, I mean, I got 49, so I applied to UJ, and now was the time. I got accepted, and they said, look, um, well, you've got a spot. You can come to CTA here. And I remember sitting, and I said, I started this whole thing. Mm. And that's where the fixed mindset comes in. They say, no ways, I'm not, I'm not giving up. Yeah. And I said, no ways, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to finish what I've started. So mm. went on to do my CTA adverts, and phew, that was tough. <laughs> I failed all four subjects. Really? All failed four? All four subjects wow. failed. 44, 45, 46, 47. It was literally oh, like, wow. this is a lie. There's no ways. You can't make up marks like this. Wow. But because I had gone through what I went through with the third year, my mindset was in a different space. And mm -hmm. I said, it's okay. You know, yes, I failed it, but I did something which is quite ridiculous. Um, I contacted BDO and I said to them, listen, I want to start my articles. Mm. Um, I want to start my articles. Um, I know I'm not, I'm not going to be on the bursary because I failed, but I'd rather have money to pay for my studies. Mm. 
yeah. as opposed to me now having to get loans. Let me rather study mm -hmm. and work. Yeah. And they said, look, I mean, honestly speaking, not a lot of people pass it that way. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. You're going to yeah. get on the back foot. And I said, yeah. you know what? So be it. I, know, I knew for a fact that I've gone through the syllabus. Yeah. And I said, it will have to take a lot of my mindset shift in terms of yeah. when everyone is actually, and I still remember this, when you know, you're all in the office unoccupied. When you're going to be studying. At yeah. I, I felt it because I used to stay in the office. Yeah. So I'd go to a client at 7 a.m. At 3.30, I leave the client, be it wherever. I go back to the office. Mm. And I'd study every single day. And that was pure exam technique. I just yeah. worked on exam technique yeah. questions. Every single day, I leave that office every single day at 10 p.m. If you wanted me to come to your bra, you give me a two months notice. Yeah. If you don't give me a notice, yeah. I don't come. But it started... Because now I started got I got I got used to doing questions. I got used mm. to understanding what mm. am I missing. Realized that CTA was all about the mind, mm. and I passed it. I did it part time. I passed it. I wrote board, passed board exam, and with because of that, I could actually write board two at the same time as the previous group. So because I wrote yeah. one more yeah. article, yeah, 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 so yeah. I actually caught up. So I caught up a year. Yeah. But the funny part was that I actually stayed behind a year because I had failed. So yeah. It's, it's all about your journey and going through your journey and yeah. running your race. Yeah. But all of a sudden, auditing started making sense because yeah. I was auditing. And yeah. I, I, could, I was always looking for, I was solving problems all the time that, mm. yes, I've solved it. Okay, when I study, I need to look out for this. I worked mm. at a manufacturing client um, as a yeah. client. I learned, you know, standard costing. I learned variances. I learned ABC, yeah. traditional. So I applied my whole life. And yeah. what I was doing in articles yeah. to the study, yeah. and all of a sudden, Things I was just sense. in a different space. Yeah. I think I, I want to clarify that when you say um, that you did, you know, when, when you worked with stuff on your audit clients and then the, your studying made sense, I just want to clarify that that's not an automatic process because no. there's a lot of people who are doing work and are doing articles and studying who don't have that connection and who don't have that. Um, like, oh, it makes sense now. I want to clarify that that's a very active, specific process that you have to go through to say, this is what I'm doing on my client. Actively ask yourself, how yeah. does this apply to my studying? How does my theory work here? And you have to sit yeah. and work at that. It doesn't happen by magic. No, because I have no. an enormous amount of students who go, oh, well, just because I'm working with this stuff, it's just going to come right by itself. No. It doesn't. Most students yeah. keep their studying and their work in separate boxes mm. and they don't actually ask themselves how these two fit together. Because it's, yeah. and it's under, in a way, it's kind of vaguely understandable because you just don't have time and you're so busy on the go. Mm. But I, I just want to clarify that that took and takes very active, a very active thought 100%. process to go. This 100%. is what I did today. Let me go and pick yeah. out the studying that relates to that yeah. and look at these two and go, it doesn't actually really... They don't look the same at all. How is that supposed to work? Let me but try and why? reconcile why. Oh, mm, 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 mm. True. Um, it's, it's a it, process. It's, it's not automatic. And it's, it's a process. A it's, it's, it's a learning yeah. process. It takes time. But I realized that I had to, because I needed to also leverage the thing of, I can't study for eight hours. No. How do I, and, and, and it's also the questions yeah. that you ask you. So yeah. you get into an audit and there's procedures already there for you. The third year has done it. Yeah. But you don't ask yourself, how did you get to this procedure? Yeah. Why, why is the procedure? So I was very inquisitive. You know, yeah. it's a revenue section and there's these procedures. I'm like, but well, I would have never thought of that procedure. Yeah. Why did you think of it? And it's the probing and asking the question. So that now when I'm doing a question and I'm actually doing an old question, now I start thinking about the I'm thought process the same, that yeah. manager went through yeah. to get to this procedure. What is the risk? What am yeah. I trying to actually mitigate? If yeah. I know what I'm mitigating, you know, a lot of people... Why do we lock our homes at night? You know, and, and, and I took it back to the basic small yeah, little things. Absolutely. The control that you put in place because you're mitigating a specific risk. Yep, you know? yep. but, but when you study and you just read, oh, okay, control in place, and you just read it. Yeah. And then in a question, yep. it pops up. And I mean, for students now, I really, really feel sorry for them because of COVID. COVID, you're going to see impairments. You're going to see Every some fun stuff. I mean, three years. Going concern, have, impairment, oh my word, it's analytical reviews, <laughs> subsequent events. Event. Of, yes, and events of the year. I mean, exactly. Um, but but now, <laughs> it's about asking themselves as students as to say, what did COVID do yeah. to impact business? Yeah. yeah. You know, could business control this? 
Yeah. Was it in their hand? Was it yeah. certain? Was there uncertainty? So understand it first and, and unpack it and look at it and say, okay, if I was running a business, what would have happened what to would me? I have done? Yeah. What would I have done? Yeah. And, and, and understand that the lecturers are also getting excited because it's, it's the first time something brand new is coming to play. Oh, so yeah, uh, yeah. It, it doesn't sound right to say that anybody's excited about COVID. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, like, it's, it's literally. I mean, even in business, it's the first time that we're doing things like this. I mean, yeah, there's nothing. It's completely nothing. different. It's it's something that I mean, for yourself, you're always doing these online, and you've always been digital. But you had to yeah. change your model. You had yeah. to adapt yourself. You yeah. had to say, well, how do I, you know, do things differently? How yeah. do I keep people more? Because sometimes we're so used to we we're a loving country. We want to be with people. We want yeah. to be around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, you know, how do you make sure that everyone's mindset is in a, right. yeah. space, in, yeah. a, in a comfortable space when it's so uncertain, when no yeah. one knows what's going to happen tomorrow? No. And it, it's, it's, it's all, it's based on you as a person and what you do with the situation, the circumstances, the knowledge, the resources. And let's be honest, in a lot of cases, it's about asking for help, you know, um, just because you're a CA and you're as qualified as you are and you're all fancy and you've got that very fancy painting behind you and all the rest of that, very fancy, um, doesn't mean you have all the answers. No, you don't. And, and the smart people are the ones who go, I'm sorry, I just want to clarify something. I don't get it. You know, I, I don't get, I don't, I don't get that. Yeah. And it's, it's something my students don't understand. Is that I don't want to ask you a question, Yvonne, because I don't want you to know how stupid I am. Like, Mm. I don't want you to know that I, and I'm like, dude, first of all, I know how stupid you are. I've been there and I've lectured <laughs> enough students. I can tell you exactly what you don't know. In fact, I know better than you do what you don't know. So that's the first thing. Second thing, the smart people are the ones who are prepared to put up their hand and go, um, I just want to clarify something here. You know, mm. the, the best audit clerks are the ones who ask questions. Yeah. It's the stupid ones. It's the idiots who go, yeah, sure. You know, who go straight out the planning meeting and just keep mm. quiet and do da, da, da. Those are the ones who land up with the most review queries where the manager's like, you're going to have to go back and redo all of this because yeah. you did the wrong thing and you didn't listen. Da, da. It's the smart clerks who go, let me jot this down, what I'm supposed to be on. doing. Before yeah. I start the job, let me take it to my senior and just go, I just want to clarify, this is what you had in mind, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is. Am I in the right process? Am I on yeah. Cause I don't want to go and spend three weeks doing this thing only to find, mm -hmm. and then I go, oh, okay, no, we just need to shift this a little here. Or like, yeah, I quite like that thinking, but just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you don't have to spend three weeks doing the wrong thing. True. And then do True. one week of work and take it back to your senior and go, this is what I've done. This is what yeah. I've interpreted. I found this. I think we can still, how do you feel about this? Seniors mm. going like, oh, fantastic. You know, I'm not waiting for three weeks for you. And then you have to go back and spend another three weeks there. Exactly. That's the smart thing to do. But people mm. don't want to do that because they don't want to be the one asking the question because we think that asking questions are stupid. Yeah. We but think it's, it's actually quite sad because yeah. we, it, it's what you spoke of earlier on. We were saying the schooling system says, if you get it quickly, that's it. Smart. You're the smartest. Yeah. You ask me a question. Ah, now we have to stop again because this person doesn't get it. <laughs> and it's not about that. It really, 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 really. It's true. That. You know, it's, it's, so it's true. actually it's a learning process. I mean, I'm learning every single day. You yeah. Know, yeah. I'll, and I'll proud go to, to a say massive it. company, and it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay to walk into a boardroom and you're like, shucks, sure, these guys are smart. Yeah. You know, and it's okay. It's fine. I heard such a fascinating thing after I qualified from, from, from someone that I spoke to. And I never really understood it. At the time he said it, I was a little like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, but it's really sat with me more. Is that if you find that you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get out of there. Yeah. Like, because you're not, you're, you're not doing it. Yeah, whenever you're the smartest person in the room, make sure that you don't mm -hmm. stay that way because, yeah. you know, we, and we have a tendency to want to be in that place because it means like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm good, I'm smart, I'm okay, everything's fine, mm -hmm. but you're not growing and you're not learning. So no, if you not. find you're the smartest person in the room, leave. You need to get out of there and go and find a space where you're not the smartest person in the room. Are you feeling like, what is happening in your life? Yeah, because <laughs> you need place, to like... learn. If you're the smartest person yeah. in the room, you're not learning. You need to go and get into a room where you're not the smartest person so that you can mm. learn. And I think that's a shift for a lot of students. They're like, I want to be True. the smartest person in the room. No, you don't. True. Because that's when, that's the day you stop learning. That's like, so true. That, 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 that was something that I was like, no, I want to be the smartest person in the room <laughs> because that means that I'm okay. <laughs> like, that means, like that means that I'm fine. You know, like I can mm. breathe. And he was like, yeah, but that means you stagnate. You don't learn, yeah. you don't grow, True. you don't change, you don't adapt. Growth is not, uncomfortable. That's the truth. Growth is not good. Growth is uncomfortable. You no. go to the gym 
and you come it's back, you're like, oh, that wasn't bad first day. You go back the second day, you're like, what? I can't even move. My legs are sore. You so much pain, but you'll see the transformation. The Three months down the line, you'll see yeah. the results. And it won't be instant. It won't be instant. It won't be instant. It's going to hurt for a while and it's, it's going to be crap. so painful. But it and, and, and guess good. what happens? You're going to start seeing some results, maybe let's say three to six months. And then all of a sudden you're like, no, 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 no. That was a five kg. Now you need to go to seven and a half. And you're like, it, this pain doesn't stop. No, and all doesn't. of a sudden you get used to the pain. Yes, there you go. Actually oh, ask like yourself, you where's that pain? Yeah. And then you know, if you go to the gym and you're not feeling pain, you're not, you're doing not working out. Yeah. Not doing it properly. True. So I like the way you say that. You're not your objective is not to get rid of the pain. Your objective is to find ways to be okay with that. Make it your be friend. okay with it. You need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. It, yeah. it sounds crazy, no, but don't. you literally have to be comfortable no. with being uncomfortable. Like, oh okay, I'm uncomfortable. Mm, chill, it's fine. Yeah, it doesn't mean you have to it doesn't mean you have to love the process because like no. I don't, I, you know, I'm like, oh, crap, another day of like not knowing what the hell I'm doing. It would be really nice not to have to, but I'm not going to achieve anything if I'm not, not in that space. So You're I'm going to have to like suck it up and, and kind of go, okay, so this is part of the process. But I do know that in a month's time when that contract is done, It'll when the job is done and someone's yeah. come back and gone, wow, that was like, we really love what you did with this. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Like I didn't exactly. think that I was going to be able to do it. And I was <laughs> unsure and I've never touched someone more and I was very mm -hmm. nervous about it. But like, look what I made. I didn't yep. think, you know, I, I wasn't able I to do this before. Yeah. I didn't think I could. I was worried about it and I was like nervous about it. But look what I made. I wouldn't have done that, mm. you know, if, if that mm. hadn't have happened. So the, the payoff does happen, but it's not, yeah. it's not necessarily tomorrow. That payoff. It's not happens. instant. It's not yeah. instant. And, and, and you know, I, I, I love the fact that the world is so fast. It's so dynamic. But at the same time, it actually, it yeah. actually is a problem. Because, it is a problem. You know, yeah. if I'm hungry, I get on my phone. Yes. And exactly. off oh, man, I'm working, I don't have time. Let me just quickly Uber Eats. It yeah. comes. Yeah. You know, it's so quick. Everything happens now. Yep. You know, yep. oh, I don't feel like going to the mall anymore because yeah. I have to walk, take a lot.com, uh -huh. I buy something here. Yeah. But yeah, the problem with that is that you're under the impression that everything must work that way. And there, there are some things that they will can't. never be faster than they are. You can't yeah. build muscles any faster than you could can't. 50 years ago. You can't, you know, you can't learn yeah. stuff, stuff that's difficult any faster. Yeah. Some stuff still takes time and you've got it to does take, it, it, it doesn't takes mean that time. you fail. It's a process. You must embrace it. And, and it, it's, unfortunately, we also don't spend time, as, as we said, you I mean, I, I love, I've loved this because we've actually been brutally honest about it. Yeah. A lot of times, <laughs> everyone spends time on the nice, mushy, yeah. Yeah. And, and doesn't get really to the crux of, guys, it's, it's actually... It's actually quite, yeah, it's actually depressing when you think about it. I mean, we <laughs> no, we laugh a lot about it. I know, we really laugh about it and we, you know, and, and I mean, that's our coping mechanism. Yeah. You know? I mean, for the you students, also, why are these people laughing and having so much fun? I mean, we, we're actually literally going into a bank to say in our muscle memory and saying, wow, actually, you know, Marathon. to pass those days was something else. It was quite difficult. I don't want to go we're back. laughing and, and, and. It's, it's nothing that you wish even on your worst enemy. You well, I don't know about that. To to. I'm mine. I'm mine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a few people I can think of. Oh, that's painful. That's so painful. <laughs> Michael. Uh, no. Michael. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> but you're, like, you're right. If, if you, I think if you gave me a little piece of paper going, go back in time and go and do CTA again, and I guarantee that you pass, I'll, even then I would be like, mm, yeah, no, I don't think fine. so. Maybe I'll do something else. Uh, and you know what's interesting is that you forget also. You know, you, you, you tend to, some people are people who brush things under the carpet and be like, yeah. that didn't happen. Yeah. And yeah. there's people who actually remember that that builds their character going forward. So you also need to look at it in, in two ways. You say, what type of person are you? Mm. What have you learned from it? Are you a person who just like chucks it away and then it comes mm. back later in your life? You know, so we all deal with things differently, but the best thing that I think worked for me was actually having conversations, speaking to people yeah. and saying, look, yeah, this is right. difficult. I'm, I'm struggling. I don't know what to do here. It's normal. Uh, you know, yeah. is, you know just, just, just be frank about it. Mm. You know, it's not like, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's not like you're actually a failure because you, you're not finding it easy to get a section, but that's how life works. Life mm. is not, you know, it's not a book that's guaranteed, you know, you walk outside, you don't know what's going to happen. No, you you know, it's, it's got twists and turns. That's just how life is. It's exciting. But, but yeah, so I think 
uh, I normally like kind of end my conversations with like stuff that, you know, advice that you have, but I think so much of the stuff that you've said is, is inherently really good advice for people to think about when they're studying is, um, you know, take it from, you know, like all the people I speak to, but like both you and I have qualified. We have obviously had very different experiences um, and different things were easy and hard and, and all the rest of this, but one, it's messy. Two, it's not mm. easy. Three, feels crap. Yep. Four, it's uncomfortable, but you, 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 you kind of have to live with it. It's horrible. Mm. You wouldn't do it again, but you're really glad you did it. Yeah. You know, um, and you learn a lot of lessons that you don't really understand at the time, but you're really glad now that you went through them because it built True. something inside you that you didn't, you couldn't put a, you couldn't put a label on it at the time. You couldn't. But, you didn't know what, you know, it was, yeah. what it did, discipline levels, the mental strength, whatever the case is, there's, there's certain underlying skills that you're learning that will stay with you for far longer than your understanding mm. of how to do construction contracts. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Construction contracts is out the window, but you know, the, <laughs> the mental strength of, of, yeah. of, of that experience is, is still with you. And that is, that's what makes, you know, that's what makes a true professional is, is that strength of character and, and that ability that if, you know, if I had to, I could go back and study construction contracts again. If I needed to, I could go, you know, I could go and learn it again because I have learned how to learn. How to, yeah. You know, so, that's so, so yeah. true. Um, very, very true. I think if, if for, for people that are looking for more information or based on the stuff that we discussed, guys, if you have other questions, leave them in, um, in, in comments underneath the, underneath the post. And um, hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Pat will, will chat to us again uh, and, and answer further questions. I think, you know, the, the idea of you being in business development, I think, is so fascinating because it's such a nice um, dovetail between uh, skills that are sort of more classic accounting versus skills that are fast to becoming very important, which is yep. branding, marketing, sales, yep. you know, and, and yep. whether you're going to run your own company, whether you are going to work for someone else, whether you're an entrepreneur, you know, like, like yourself, uh, your own brand, you have to be able to market yourself as a professional. And mm. that is, you know, that is an underlying skill that we're not really taught. So I think that's a really interesting set of skills that you're dovetailing, which I, you know, would be really good to, to chat about some more in the future. So thank you very, very much for your time. I'm aware that we've gone over time and I'm sorry about that, but thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. It's, it's been very interesting. I mean, it was fun. It was yeah. you know, exhilarating. It's, 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 it's great to, now I always say it's very difficult to find people that are a bit cooked <laughs> because that's that's not literally that's so a lot of people weird. think of a bit you know I because I, I don't fit the norm no, no and no. It's, it's it's quite nice and refreshing once in a while to have a conversation with someone that someone is literally weird it's true. cooked doing their yeah. own little thing because yeah. what it does it it, it it actually gives you that conviction to say look you, you're crazy but there's yeah. some crazy people yeah and, and it's, it, it works because yeah. you know you, you're always learning you're always yeah. growing you're always having that that thing that you know and, and it's it's that clan on then spending time with the people in that same mm. space yeah. because it it channels you in a different way it yeah, pushes it you does. to different heights it yeah. starts making you be more aware because yeah. also being very careful i mean being in bd it's a traditional firm and it's crazy because i'm coming with new ideas i want to market i want to do this I want right. to start, calm down stop being crazy well, down, gentlemen. Yeah. sometimes you spend some time with people that are thinking like that you actually see why pioneers are there. You actually yes. start seeing, yeah. you know, why Steve Jobs was Steve Jobs, you know, yeah. because, yeah. you know, you have to have a few people that you can go to, have the comments. So it's quite refreshing. I mean, I really, really yeah. enjoyed this. Yeah, I, myself as well. I think uh, and it's, so, it's so nice. It's, I love your sense of humor and your honesty um, and your authenticity. Like, it's, it's really great. And um, I think, yeah, I, I foresee us having, I foresee us having some more, more, weird conversations in the future. Perfectly <laughs> <laughs> okay with that. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your time. And um, I hope you have a, a, a fabulous afternoon further. And um, yeah, we, we shall probably chat again in the near future. Awesome. Have a great one. Thank you very much. Thanks.